Hey guys, it's Dr. Christopher LaPerry at Jacksonville Center for Reproductive Medicine. And today uh, we've been going through a series that has included discussing IVF and pre-implantation genetic testing. Uh, in the previous video, we just actually spoke about how PGT is done. And I just wanted to kind of define um, this whole PGT thing. I know you guys do a lot of research, um, probably look at things uh, online and there are a lot of different acronyms that stand for different things and uh, it can be confusing and overwhelming. So, um, you know, PGT stands for pre-implantation genetic testing. And a lot of times when you guys see it, there it will either be PGTA or PGTM. Uh, PGTA stands for pre-implantation genetic testing for aneuploidy, which basically what aneuploidy means is that there is an abnormal number of chromosomes in the embryo, okay, which is a really common cause, miscarriage, uh, and actually failed implantation. So you would see a lot of trisomies. Trisomies are um, where there is uh, an extra chromosome in the embryo. Uh, you could see monosomies where, an, where a chromosome is missing. Um, that is different than PGTM. Um, PGTA is typically done for couples where neither one of them carries a particular genetic problem, and we want to identify which embryos have a spontaneous genetic or chromosomal change before we put the embryo back inside the uterus. So it's a lot different than pre-implantation genetic testing for monogenetic diseases or, or PGTM, where we know that one of the parents has a particular trait or both parents have traits that they can pass on to the baby. And we have the ability to kind of test the embryo to see whether or not that embryo is affected by that particular condition. In the next series, we're gonna talk about some of the controversies that we think about when uh, patients are considering pre-implantation genetic testing and why doesn't everybody do it?